Good morning. Today is September 9, 2020. My name is Lilia, and today's options lesson is called What Would You Do? Before I start today's lesson, I'd like to thank my Patreon members for making this video possible. And now I present to you our lesson for today. In front of us is the one year daily chart for the Spiders Consumer Staples Sector ETF. Ticker symbol is XLP. I'm using stockcharts.com and this is a one year chart. On the left hand side, we have February 26, 2019, and over here we have February 26, 2020. So my first question to you is, looking at this chart on February 26, 2020, what kind of an options trade might you consider placing at this point? We can see that XLP has had a very nice run this entire time. And just recently, in early 2020, it dipped and crossed below the 50 day moving average. That's the green, uh, I'm sorry, the blue line. On February 26, 2020, XLP was trading at around $60. The slow stochastics were close to the oversold region. So looking at this chart, are you going to be neutral, bullish, or bearish on this ETF? And we're talking 30 to 45 days from this date. For me, what I usually do when these stochastics are in the oversold region is I place a semi-bullish trade because I'm kind of hoping that the underlying is going to reverse and go back up. So looking at this chart, I'm going to be selling to open one put option. So my next question to you is, with XLP at around $60, what strike price might you consider choosing? So we're going to select a put option that has between 30 and 45 days left until expiration. And we need to select a strike price. And of course, when we're selling put options, we always select strike prices that are out of the money. That means a strike price is going to be below the current price of the underlying. So perhaps the 57 put option might be acceptable. $57 is $3 below the price on February 26, 2020. And it is also below the 200 day moving average. So I'm basically betting that in the next 30 days or so, XLP is going to stay above $57. I'm using a neat little tool called On Demand, which is part of Thinkorswim. And On Demand basically allows me to go back in time so I can show you exactly what happened on February 26, 2020. So this is the put option that I decided to sell on February 26. It had about a 16% chance of being in the money, therefore 16% chance of getting assigned. And that was acceptable to me. I went pretty far out of the money and that's the reason the premiums are so low. But I was okay with this because one of the reasons I decided to sell this put was because I was okay with getting assigned. So the premium that I receive is simply going to reduce the cost basis of my ETF in the event that I got assigned. 
So to sell a put, we're going to click on the bid. And because I'm using on demand, this trade may not fill 100% correctly. So I'm going to tell you right now that the price that I actually received was 35 cents. So it's between the current bid and ask. That's displayed here. My on demand trade filled at 34 cents, which is very close to my actual trade, which was 35 cents. So now let's fast forward and see what happened to my trade. Now let's look at a chart on Thinkorswim. Two days after I sold my put option, the chart looked like this. I sold my put on February 26 and on February 28, XLP was trading at $56.97. It had crossed below the 200 day moving average and it also crossed below the lower regression line. My strike price is $57. So now, two days later, my short put is basically at the money. So let's jump over to the position and see what that looks like. Before I do that, I wanted to point out one more thing. Notice that the volume on February 27 and February 28 was much higher than previous trading volume. So on these big down days, we have a much higher trading volume. And also I want you to notice that the implied volatility is much higher here than it was previously. As mentioned before, my short put option is now pretty much at the money with 49 days remaining. And look at this. Under mark, we can see that my short up put option now costs about $2.26 to buy back. The initial credit that I received was only 34 cents. So this has jumped from 34 cents to $2.26 in just two days. And therefore, I have a paper loss of $192. This trade using margin is using up about $1,900 of buying power. So my question to you is, what would you do at this point? We still have 49 days remaining, but my option now has a loss of $195. And the ETF basically just broke through two support lines on heavy volume. What would you do? Close the trade and take the loss? Or wait and see what happens? Now let's jump over to March 4th, 2020, and we can see that XLP went below the regression line on February 28, but then recovered. So now here we are on March 4th. It is sitting right in between my two moving averages. On March 4th, XLP was up 3.62%. Up $2.18. It is trading at $62, so my put option is again out of the money. But is this moving average my new resistance? Can XLP break through the resistance and continue higher, or is it going to go back down? Let's go back over to the positions and take a look at the trade and see what happened. Under PL open, we can see that I still have a loss on the trade, but it's a lot better than on February 28. And notice, now that my short put is out of the money, the margin requirements have also decreased. So that's one thing to keep in mind if you're trading with margin. If you're selling put options 
and the underlying is dropping, your trade is going to require more and more buying power. On the other hand, if your trade, I'm sorry, if your underlying is rising, then the margin requirements will decrease. So, question to you is, what would you do now on March 4th? The universe basically has given us a second chance. Are you going to close a trade now and take a small loss? Or are you going to leave it open and maybe try to squeeze a profit out of this trade? We still have 44 days remaining. What would you do? Now let's jump to March 16, 2020. So it looks like XLP went back down and now my short put is in the money again. XLP is trading at around $50 or so. On March 16, my strike price is $57. So I am almost $7 in the money. So let's jump over to the positions and see what that looks like. So now under the PL open, we can see that my paper losses are much higher. All of a sudden, it's over $491 loss. Also notice under margin requirements that this trade is now using up more buying power. I am less than $3 in the money at this point, which is not bad. However, look at how expensive this option has become. Remember, I only received 34 cents in the beginning. And now on March 16, this put option has risen to $5.25, which is pretty amazing. And the reason it is so high is because of the inflated implied volatility. So let's go back to the charts and take a look at that. See this right here? It is way up at the top. It is much, much higher than it was in previous days. So the inflated IV causes the put premiums to rise as well. So it's costing me a lot more money to buy back my short put. So now here's a question for you. What would you do at this point? Buy back your put, close a trade, and take the loss or leave it open and see what happens. So notice again that the margin requirements are rising, but I still have 32 days remaining. One important note about margin requirements is if your buying power starts decreasing and you end up in the danger zone, you may get a margin call. That means you need to bring your account balance back up to a safer spot. In order to do that, you need to either deposit more cash into your account or you need to close out your trade. If you do neither of those things, the broker is going to start closing your positions for you and you may end up with some pretty ugly losses if that happens. So always be really careful when you're trading with margin. Do not over leverage yourself. Now let's jump to March 23rd, 2020. So this is definitely looking bad. We have a death cross right there. That means the 50 day moving average crossed below the 200 day moving average. That is a bearish signal. And we've had, let's see, one, two, three, four, four consecutive days of heavy selling. Look at this volume right here. The volume on the down days is much higher than the volume on the up days. So lots of people are dumping this ETF. And we have a rising IV, which means that these put premiums are getting larger and larger. So now my underlying is trading at $48. My strike price is $57. So I am pretty deep in the money at this point. 
what are we going to do? Let's take a look at the position and see what happened. Okay, are you guys ready for the big reveal? So you know what I'm going to ask you next. What are you going to do about this trade? Leave it open. Or close it and be done with it. Here it is at the bottom of this page. The losses now are almost $800. The marginal requirements are rising. And the probability of getting assigned is 100%. Even though there's still 25 days remaining. So, what are you going to do with the trade now? Close it and take the loss. Leave it open and see what happens. Or maybe rolling it. Maybe. And the only reason for rolling it at this point is if the extrinsic value is low. That means there's a very high risk of early assignment. So I'm going to add the extrinsic column over here and we can see what it is. Go up here to the layout and I'm going to click on this. Okay, here's my trade. Intrinsic value is $8.43. That means my option is in the money by this much. The markers are still open and that's why these numbers are still changing. The extrinsic value is around 10 cents. And because this option is so deep in the money, there's a very high chance of early assignment, even though there are still 25 days remaining. So notice that the extrinsic value is getting lower and lower. So we need to make a decision at this point. Unless we are really sure that we want to get assigned, we should either buy back this option and close the trade, or we can roll it and give it some more time. And again, the only reason for rolling it is to avoid getting assigned, because who knows how much lower this is going to go, right? We have a death cross here. So I'm going to show you how to roll a short put option. Rolling a trade simply means that I am buying back my current trade at a loss and I'm going to sell to open a new one with a higher credit and hopefully get a net credit on the transaction. Right now, my short put is trading between $8.30 and $8.90. And $8 that means it will cost me this much to buy back my short put. So if I simply bought it back and did nothing else, all I'm doing is closing out the trade and taking this loss. Rolling a trade means that I am closing this trade and taking a loss, but I'm also selling to open a new trade, a new put, and hopefully be able to collect a credit that is higher than the cost to buy back my current losing option. In the spirit of full disclosure, I did roll my trade on March 23rd because I wanted to avoid getting assigned. So I had to go all the way out to January 15, 2021, out 290 days, 298 days, in order to get a decent credit. What I also wanted to do was to roll my option down to strike prices. And that's the reason I had to go all the way out to January 2021 to get a premium that was higher than the cost to buy back the April option. So the rolling trade looks like this. Highlight the current position, select create rolling order, and we're going to sell a calendar. So I am buying back the losing trade, which is the April 57 put, and I am selling to open the January 2021 
55 put. And I get a credit of $1.12 mid price. In my real trade, I received $1.24 on the roll. But this is close enough. And let's hope that this fills using on demand. My rolling trade filled at a dollar and twelve cents. So notice that my April option is now gone. And what I have remaining is the new option. But I want you to notice something. Under trade price, it shows a premium of nine dollars and sixty cents. But this is not totally accurate because I had to pay eight dollars and forty eight cents to buy back the April option. So it's really important that you keep track of these debits and credits when you're rolling options. My opening trade gave me a credit of 34 cents. The roll gave me another credit of $1.12. So that means so far I received $1.46 in credits. This number is important because it tells me at what price I should buy back this new put option. Currently my new put is trading at $9.60. My goal is to buy this option back for $1.46 or less. If I buy it back at $1.46, my entire trade is simply break even. If I can buy it back for less than $1.46, then I can sort of squeeze a little profit out of the trade. So this is the number that we need to keep track of. Notice that my new put option is currently in the money, but I'm not at risk of early assignment because the extrinsic value is so large. It's $3.48. The only reason I had to roll my April option was because the extrinsic value dropped all the way down to about three cents. And I didn't want to take any chances of getting assigned. So now we have an option that expires in 298 days. Obviously the plan is to close this thing early and not have to hold it for 298 days. But the only way that we can buy it back at a decent price is if XLP starts going back up and my option is out of the money again. Now let's jump to July 21, 2020. So about four months have passed since I rolled the option. So I happened to roll my option right at the bottom on March 23rd. Remember, my initial put option had an expiration date of April 17 and a strike price of $57. Let's see what happened on April 17. On April 17, XLP closed at $60.50. So that means if I had not rolled my option on March 23rd, my short put would have been fine on the expiration date of April 17. But since I did roll the option, now I'm kind of stuck with it, right? But obviously, back on March 23rd, I didn't know this was going to happen. My crystal ball wasn't working that day. So, hindsight is always 2020. But now, let's jump over here. We're now looking at July 21st, 2020. And XLP is back up and is trading at around $61. I have a January 55 put option. So that means my put option is now out of the money. So remember that buyback price that we needed to remember? $1.46. If my put option is trading at $1.46, we can consider buying it back, closing it, and just break even. So let's jump over to the positions and see what happened. Here it is. It is trading between $1.40 and $1.55. 
these other prices on July 21st. And this put option now has a 28% chance of getting assigned. There are still 178 days remaining in the trade. But what's interesting is under PL open, it shows a profit of $812. And this is obviously incorrect. Like I mentioned earlier, I didn't really receive $9.60 on this trade because it cost me so much money to buy back the April put option. So again, the number that we're working with is $1.46. And right now, this option is trading between 140 and 155. So the question to you is, are you now going to close a trade and break even? Or are you going to leave it open and try to get a profit out of this? Let's look at the charts again. XLP is now in the overbought region. And again, this is July 21. It is overbought. It has had a nice recovery since the lows of March. Can XLP continue to rise? Or is it going to go back down? If you leave this trade open, it means that you're exposing yourself to all that drama again. What if XLP goes back down and you have to go through this all over again, right? Does it make sense to close a trade now and break even and move on to a completely different trade? In the spirit of full disclosure, this is exactly what I decided to do. I decided to just buy back my short put on July 21st, 2020, and just break even on the trade. I figured the universe has given me another chance to get out of this thing without losing a ton of money. And I really wasn't in the mood to stay in this trade for another 178 days just to make $146. To me, that did not make any sense. Right? This is a total credit that I received on this trade. If I held my trade all the way until the expiration date, 2021, another 178 days, all I'm going to make is $146. That is too little money for too much time. So that's what I did. I closed the trade. And now I'm going to torture myself and pretend that I had not closed the trade back on July 21st. So this is a one-year chart of XLP. And this is today's date. September 9, 2020. I closed the trade on July 21st when XLP was right here. And after I closed my trade, XLP did indeed continue to rise. So again, just to torture myself, let's go to the trade tab and see what the premium is for that January 2021 put option. Here it is. The mid price is around 84 cents. So if I had held the trade until today, September 9, 2020, I could have bought back my put for 84 cents instead of $1.46. But again, Hindsight is 2020. At the time that I closed the trade, back in July, I did not think that XOP was going to rise as much as it did. So I made the best decision that I could at the time with limited information. And I was pretty happy that I simply broke even on the trade. I hope you learned something interesting in this lesson. Thank you for watching.